Hey everybody, I want to take a look at this pi product notation before we jump into the problem at hand. The L pi is uh, the multiplication equivalent of uh, the summation notation. So uh, let's work with a simple example. Let's say 36, okay? So this says very tersely, what is the product of all the divisors of 36? Okay, so let's write them down. Now, I'm not going to multiply it out, but I just want to make sure I'm clear with the usage of the notation. So, 1's a divisor of any integer. 2's a divisor of 36. 3's a divide, divisor of 36. 4 is a divisor. What else we got? Uh, 6. Now, 6 is the only divisor that doesn't pair off with anything, which will play into what we're doing today. 9. Uh, what, 12. Um, 18 and 36. Now, again, I'm not going to multiply these out, but that's what this pi notation means. It means not to add, but to multiply each of these divisors. And again, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of them, I think. What do we, and so, anyway, whatever that multiplies out to would be the answer. We're not going to mess with that. Now, notice that they do. Um, occur in pairs, like 4 times 9 is 36, 3 times 12 is 36. You can see that 2 times uh, 18 is 36. But notice 6 doesn't pair with anything, okay? And so it would be a, you, you could think 6 times 6 is 36, but it's, it's not a pair of distinct divisors in that sense. And that's a little detail in this particular problem, okay? So let's move along. Now we have a, but, a much bigger number that we're trying to evaluate here. And I probably should state that D is greater than zero. Okay, the divisors are greater than zero. You can have negative divisors, of course, that pair off with other negative divisors. But we're supposed to find the product of all these divisors. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna first consider the prime factorization because that gives you direct information on the number of divisors. Uh, this isn't too hard to show. 3 squared is 9, 5 squared is 25, 9 times 25 is 225, and 11 times uh, 225 is the 2475 you see here. So the prime factorization is quite useful. Now I do want to show you just one more thing before we carry on to explain why this is 13. You see 12 right here, 3 to the 12th, 5 to the 12th, but then you have 13 times 13. and then So you notice how you're incrementing each of these to get the total count on the divisors right here, okay? Well, I, some of you may know, but I just want to go through that for my own understanding. Uh, you can re, re, this is just one example of how you could compose divisors from the um, prime factorization. So 2475 to the six, which is the number we're trying to find the product of the divisors of, okay? This is equal to, and this is, this is designed, or the purpose of this is to let you see why you increment here, uh, the, the, each of the exponents to get this product down here. Okay, so let's write 3 to the 12th. Okay, now let's go ahead and put 5 to the 0. Yeah, you know, the well-known property of exponents, anything raised to the 0 power is 1. It's very easy to prove. And then also times, uh, what, 11 to the 0? Now, notice that would yield the divisor of 3 to the 12th, right, which is a divisor. So let's put that parenthetically. Now, let's reverse the roles of things. Okay, now let's put 3 to the 0. And then let's go ahead and let uh, 5 to the 12th come back to life. And 11 to the 6th power. Okay, so you see that produces... Uh, a divisor, namely 3 to the 12th, whatever that is, would be this divisor, right? And then uh, times whatever this is, 5 to the 12th times 11 to the 6th, right? But you see these zeros here? You have to allow for zeros to be part of acceptable exponent values, and that explains why this 12 has 13 possible, the, the, this exponent has 13 possible values starting at 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 12. Okay, and similarly for the 6, we get the 7 right here. So in that sense, we get 1,183 divisors, all right? Now, one of the divisors is, plays the very same role as 6 did right up here. You know, like 
Uh, six six squared co is corresponds to thirty six, right? But it's not a, a pair of distinct divisors like the others. Okay, so let's write that down. Um, well, I did write it down right here. One of the divisors is twenty four seventy five cubed. Okay, and that squared is the twenty four seventy five six that you see right here. Okay, so you see, notice we dropped from eleven eighty three right here to eleven eighty two. But each of the pairs multiplies out to give you 24, uh, uh, 75 to the 6th power, right? We had to divide by 2 because that would give you 591 pairs of distinct divisors. Each of these pairs has a product of the number we're interested in right up here, right? Okay, so where does that lead us? Well, it tells us that this is going to be equal to uh, 24, the product of the divisors, is going to be 24, uh, 75 raised to the sixth. Now, I'll just write it in a way that makes it more clear what we're doing here. Since there's 512 times this can happen with products of distinct divisors, we write 591 right here, right? And I hope that makes sense. I love this. I think it's really cool. You, everybody knows about the sum of the divisors, but this is the product of the divisors, okay? So you see, that would handle all the distinct pairs, but we can't forget that we still have um, this guy left right here. One of the divisors is 2475 cubed. So you see, we have to multiply this by 24. 75 cubed. You see that? That's kind of cool. 2475 quantity cubed. Now, y'all, so this would be the answer. It's not considered to be simplified, but that is the answer. Now, if you want to go ahead and do the laws of exponents, if you'll allow me to use the calculator here, that would be 2475. Uh, and then if you have 591 copies of six copies, you have 6 times 591 copies. So let me multiply that out. I could try to do that in my head, but we'll just go ahead and trust the calculator. So uh, 6 times 591, okay, that's equal to 3546, okay? 3546. So you see this is ginormous number here, but we can leave it in exponential form. Still times uh, 24. 75 raised to the third power. And now we're in a position where we add the exponents right. We have 3,546 copies of 2475 and three copies. So you just add the exponents. A nice way to tell your students you, without memorizing a bunch of rules. So what we get here is 24. The final answer here would be 2475. Uh, and then we're going to add... 3 to this number, which we can do without a calculator, I hope. 35, uh, 49, right? That's what I'm getting. So there you go. Again, a very cool problem. This is the answer. Uh, I liked it a lot. I, I think it's a general way to solve these kind of problems. And I don't remember seeing much in elementary number theory books about functions of of, of when you do the product of the divisors, sigma is well known for the sum of the divisors, you know, and tau is known for the number of divisors, but this is actually the product of the divisors. And again, you can, this is just a huge number, unpronounceable number, no telling how many digits, uh, God, you know, uh, in, the, in probably in the 15,000 range in the digits, maybe more. But uh, anyway, that is the product of the distinct divisors of this number, uh, and I won't write it down again because we here, here was the original problem and here's our answer. But anyway, guys, thank you for viewing. I hope you enjoyed this one.